We're going to do some talking today. Here we go. We are back, and I'm joined today by our co-host and good friend, Linda Joy. Linda, Hello. how are you today? Hi, Rick. Well, Linda, you know who our guest is today? Um, I've, I've been keeping this a secret me. from her. Yes, you. You're our guest today. We're going to find out, because people are sending notes asking, who's Linda Joy? We want to know more about Linda Joy. And so we thought, why not? tell people a little bit more about you so that they know who you are and what you do. You know, we've talked on the show that you do voiceover and you've done animations and e-learning and narrations and commercials and all sorts of stuff in the, in the voiceover industry. How did you wind up getting into voiceover? It was always what I wanted to do. Well, acting. So my, my background is in acting. I have a bachelor's degree from the conservatory Mozartium in mm -hmm. Salzburg. That's Mozart School of Music, and there's a theater department there. And so I started out in theater and in Germany, and then started freelance after about five years of theater. And um, that's how when I started freelancing, I started doing voiceover work. Kind of the thought was that will be my daily bread. And of course, in Germany, the industry is mostly lip syncing. Mm. So you lip sync mostly i did a lot of um radio theater too and and filming for film and for television but really after theater that's how i kind of it was kind of a a natural progression from one to the other <clears throat> and, yes. and you know people forget we use our voice in acting a lot i mean you have to yes um and and one of the things people also forget or actually in the e-learning world they try to avoid is having emotion in, in e-learning and the boy I think you know without emotion in e-learning you lose half the message but but that's so important because as a trained actress that's what you're trained to do learn how to emote and how to do things that that get people's attention yes now and you've done a lot of now you a lot of people don't know this but you have a very close relationship to Miss Piggy <laughs> yes I'm the German voice of baby Miss Piggy baby Miss Piggy so the cartoon character in, ba in Muppet Babies, I did her entire voice, um, not only the dubbing, but also when she was on commercials or when she <laughs> needed a radio interview, then I did her as her voice, as Piggy. And yeah, and once you start doing voices like that and you are known for those, for, for in <clears throat> this case, for baby Miss Piggy's voice, yes. then you, people identify you so i started then um everywhere where they needed somebody screaming something high pitched <laughs> that was then me so really my background is hugely in animation i did almost exclusively animation for about 16 years wow that's so, a long time and uh, and you also do gaming you've done quite a few games yes yes i live in the middle of the United States. Well, I live in Colorado. My studio is in Colorado. So um, I'm not really where the industry is. I like last year I did fly out to LA to record a video game. That was that was a fun experience. It's always nice to go into a studio that somebody else's. You don't have to concentrate on the technical stuff. You just go, you appear, <clears throat> you can concentrate on your voice and on your role, and then you're done. Um, so I don't do as much as I used to. But the, the games are fun. It's interesting. And, you know, with gamification in the e-learning world, that's something that, you know, gamification isn't necessarily a game, but it's elements of game design. But yes. one of those elements is voice and acting and scenarios. And, and that's where the, that whole kind of just like in games, you, you listen to a game, it's really just a bunch of scenarios, but you get the story. Yes. It's a narration. And then they take the sound bites for the different things that you could be doing or reactions you might have to something. Um, it's actually gaming voiceover is a lot of work. 
Yes. Um, in gamification in, in e-learning, I think, is a really nice way to to bring the message home. It, it, it comes alive. It's, it's used a lot more and more. Mm-hmm. And I have some kind of standard characters that I do in, in the world of e-learning. Um, one I love, I do, I do two little old ladies and I just love them, <laughs> love them to death. And I'm always glad when I get to do a couple of more, I almost want to call them episodes, but of course they're not episodes in, in e-learning. They're lessons. They're lessons. Yes. <laughs> but, but even with with um, text, just run on text, you know, you use your background because it's not about the dry read. Mm-hmm. You're arcing the, the content for the listener and you're bringing in, no, you're not exaggerating, you're not a character per se, but you're 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 bringing the story you're bringing the information and you you're you're bringing that alive you know it's funny we did a a course recently on oh what was it it was it was um i think it was fraud it was about fraud in 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 banking and one of the things is somebody had to call and say something about and here's where, where, where voiceover counts because now I didn't do the voiceover on this and, and mm-hmm. I'm going to feebly attempt to do it today because my voice is slightly allergic today. Um, <clears throat> but it was something like, imagine if you did this as a flat read. You're angry and you call up the bank and say, you charge my account interest. That doesn't have a lot of power to it. No. You charge my account interest. Not that that's even less. Uh, hi, you charge my account interest. That's boring. Mm-hmm. So we we used a guy named Matt Baker, and he's very good at this. And he comes out and he's like, you charge my account interest. And I went, whoa, that was good. <laughs> yeah. uh, and he got right into it. And you know what? They loved it because that got exactly the tone that they wanted their CSRs or customer service reps to hear so that they knew how to deal with somebody who's actually angry, not just, yes. um, you charge my account. Now, now, mind you, some people would just say, you charge my account some interest, can you please un, you know, unapply that? And he took the approach of, I am angry. Yes. And it's fun, because all of a sudden that brings the whole thing to life. Yeah, and um, it's more of a learning process. Yeah, we had another one of the voiceover talents. She did something like, you charge my account interest. Why? And the why just came out of nowhere. And it's like... How funny. And that could have been read as, you charge my account interest. Why? But mm. when you add that emotion to it, like you said, it, what a difference. It, it brings it to life. And that's what people remember. Yes. They remember yeah. the voice. Now, you have a very unique voice. You have... You definitely have that... I, I would call it a British... Almost an acting voice. Well, you, you have been an actress. But... Um, I like your voice because it's very distinctive. It's it's a different tonality, and uh, and we've worked with Linda in the past, and she can do different tones and emotions. And um, and the first time you did one thing with us, and I didn't know you had done some some Disney work and things like that. I was going, that sounded like Corella Deville. <laughs> Where did that come from? Uh, <clears throat> And then, of course, we talked, and you had done a lot of different acting, and I was going, that's funny because it really just came out that way. Yes, yes. Um, People love to use my accent for things that are more international, for the larger companies that mm -hmm. are global, because my accent is not really, it's not totally distinct. I can go a bit more British. Um, I never get totally American, but it is what a lot of people call mid-Atlantic. So somewhere Mm -hmm. in the middle of the Atlantic. It's not European. It's not British. Um, and it's not American. Well, and no. so it has kind of a flair to it that people really love for this indistinct, um, for the larger companies. Now, how long have you lived in the U.S. now? I have lived in the U.S. 20 years now. 20 years. And you lived uh, in Germany for quite a while. I did. I did. Um, when I came over to the United States, I did commute to work ah, a lot. Okay. I'd fly over there and I'd work um, especially Piggy, the, the, the parts that I was on, I, I would then record for five, six weeks and then fly back home. Um, after a while, that is just not really doable anymore, especially because right. I couldn't, I directed a lot in Germany too. I 
Mm -hmm. cast my actors and would direct a lot of the German versions of movies and and television series and things like that. So that, of course, I couldn't do anymore once I'd moved over here. Um, and so then slowly, it was just not practical anymore, so I built my studio here. And now I just work from here. And you have But nice I still do a lot of German. Hey, you also have a nice studio and good equipment. <coughs> I do. I have the Sennheiser 416. Yep, that's I love the, it. The venerable standard. Yes. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, actually, I'm on it right now. You are? This see, is the 416 is, right here. Mine's you, right here. Uh, let me see. Can you see it? It's a little dark. It's, uh, I, But it's right there. You can, if I move it right there into shot, there you go. So that is the 416. The Sennheiser 416 is a shotgun mic. I can pull that. Well, it's kind of hard to pull off right now. It's on tight. Um, but it is an incredible microphone because, one, it has a great sound, but it also has a very natural sound. It doesn't distort yeah, your voice like some of them yeah. do. So what you're hearing with me today is distorted because I'm, not, I'm, I'm a little congested. Um, but this mic is incredible. It's, and it used to be $1,500. Now it's gone down to $950. Tax. And there is a there is supposedly a four seventeen or four eighteen. I've never heard it yet. Oh, uh, they finally came out with it a couple of years ago, and it's supposed to be very nice. Have not heard it, and most people don't realize this is the standard used in TV shows. Uh, even radio stations use it. Movies. This is a very good uh, shotgun microphone, and most yes. people also don't realize you can use shotguns like this for voiceover. Mm -hmm. People, in fact, the I, first time I heard that, I couldn't believe you would use this for voiceover. And I oh, tried absolutely. it. And it's beautiful. It's a great microphone. And, the, of course, there's all kinds of microphones out there. and yes. But the, the 416 is really good for my voice. And I have it on an arm so I can stand up yep. and do reads that where that it's just better to record standing up. And I can also sit down. I can just move it around in my studio. Mm -hmm. That's really That really helps. And it is interesting. When you stand up, you get a different sound. You do. You do. You have a different energy as well. Yep. Yep. Actually, especially for singing. If you're a singer, I don't know if you sing. No. Uh, no, you don't. You don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you were born in England, right? I was born in England. In England. Of American parents. So I have two oh, really? nationalities. Your parents were American? Yes. But you didn't yes. quite get that American accent. I didn't. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> I did not. And then I grew up in Austria and I was young enough to really catch the language. And then, of course, um, acting school, you really then study the language. Now, Austrian, and, Austrian German is similar to German, right? It's not the same. It's not the same. I mean, we lived on the border and I actually went, I crossed the border every day to go to school. Oh, interesting. So I actually went to school in Germany. And, um, yeah, I find, for some reason, I never picked up on the Austrian dialect. It has a beautiful, mm -hmm. a beautiful melody to it. And some words, of course, are different than German. But the high German is really what is spoken in our business. So as okay. an actor, as a stage actor, um, voice talent, it's almost Everything is high German. Okay. Interesting. I'm part Austrian, a little bit, probably 25%. And I'd love to go there one day. The cities are beautiful from what I've seen just cities in travelogues. Just yeah. Salzburg, Vienna. Vienna is supposed to be very, very pretty. Um, and I've watched some of the PBS specials where they have concerts in the... Oh, God, it's gorgeous out there. Yes. Um, and the people seem nice. And, and I always laugh they because are. in that whole area, depending what side of the mountain you wake up on, you're in a different country. Yes. I mean, really, it's, there's so many mountains, and um, and my other side of the family, well, my dad's side, it was Austrian and Northern Italian from the oh, Turin Piemonte area. So it's it's interesting. And uh, then my mom's side was Hungarian German, but they came from wow. Slovenia. So go figure, everybody's mixed up around here. Uh, oh, absolutely. You get absolutely. lost on the mountains, you wind up in a different country, you're now being raised differently. <laughs> that's, yes. That's just the way it is. Um, <clears throat> so in in your time in Germany, so you were educated in Germany and you did a lot of your acting and everything in Germany. Um, how did you get into business here? 
Um, it was very different. I mean, well, I started off, I did another degree in audiovisual media. Oh, um, if, yeah, so I have a European bachelor's and over here it's just an associate's degree. So I mm -hmm. kind of went backwards because yeah. my acting degree is from a conservatory and that mm -hmm. didn't trans translate into the American uh university system so yeah. anyway so that's where i started i thought okay i need to learn how to edit how to record myself and all of those things so that's how i started and then just really looked online tried to figure out um how are things done over here and it is very different is it okay in in general, of course, it's different working in your own studio versus working in a brick and mortar right. studio where you go and everybody else takes care of the whole technical side of things. Mm -hmm. And you don't have what I really miss. You don't have the handshake. You know, you don't. Right. In in my time in Munich, so mostly I recorded in Munich. Um, You'd go to a studio, then you'd go to your next studio, and you'd see everybody, and that was like your marketing done for the day. Yep. Because you see everybody, and people hire you because they love your energy, they want you in the studio, so that's that becomes another criteria. Um, of course, because they know you, they know you personally, and you don't have that so much. Well, you don't actually have that at all when you're in your little old studio. It's, it's almost like operating with your some of your strongest connectors your strongest mm -hmm. um a strong part of your talent and your personality tied behind your back um yeah. you're just <clears throat> as good but you don't get to interact i do miss that it is interesting because even in los angeles where there's a million studios a lot of people don't go to the studios because almost everybody now has their own studio Yes, it's, it's the it's the emerging of technology, and it has its good points. And you're right, it has its bad because, and especially in what you're doing, a lot of it is that smile. It's who you are, how you work, and and that relationship you build. Now Absolutely. there is a, a secret to it, and you know this well, and that's you know, your telephone voice and the friendliness that you have, and all of that is what always comes across. Like like you know, I've said this on a couple of shows. Your name is Linda. Joy. Linda in Spanish is pretty. And joy, well, we all know what joy is, and you are very joyful to work with. And so I think, and you and I have actually never met in person. We have not. And we've, we've known each other about seven or eight years, and yes. we've never met in person, but we've established a good friendship. And, and it's funny, more and more, I've met people throughout the years I've never met in person. And then, of course, eventually we do meet, and it's fun. Um, I had one co-host, Gina Shrek, and I love Gina. She's really nice, and she's great to work with. I used to call myself her second husband because her husband is German descent. He's 6'2", I'm 6'2". He's, we're about the same weight, and he does martial arts. I did martial arts. And, and I said, but I have one thing he can't do. And she goes, what's that? I go, I can mute you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she goes, hmm. And I did a couple mm. of times, but <laughs> and but oh, it was funny because once we finally met in person, after we did a hundred shows, she goes, "I can't do anymore." Her work was really picking up, and she couldn't work anymore because yes. she had a whole business of doing social media marketing for people, and it's very personally time consuming. Plus, she's yes. a public speaker, and that was killing her time. But I used to, I still kid her. I go, you know, we only met once that first time, and that was the end of the show. Hmm. Uh, mm. Better not meet people, but. <clears throat> No, we've met. We've met. We've been make on, sure we never meet in no, person. Really, no, or it'll be good luck. Who knows? But, uh, but it's funny because now we've actually done shows together and stuff, and we've invited her on. It just that it was just a coincidental timing, and I just cracked up, and yes. I think she feels guilty about that. I go, no, no, that was just kidding. Um, <clears throat> but it is, it is fun, and it's a fun industry. Now, you're a busy camper, so if people want to get a hold of you, let's let's show your website. We have, uh, and it's Linda Joy. VO.com, is that what it is? LindaJoyVoiceOver.com. LindaJoyVO directs to my website, so okay. that works too. So either LindaJoyVO, V as in Victor, O as in Oscar, LindaJoyVO.com or LindaJoyVoiceOver.com. And that'll get you here to that charming smile right there. And um, in fact, can we play some of your little portfolio Absolutely, things you've got? Absolutely, yes. So if we go to her portfolio area, um, what would you... 
Let's see. You want to play um, the, uh, one of the videos? Maybe start with my commercial demo. I think okay, that's so up, the on most the top, straightforward. That's going to be the commercial demo in English. That's up, yeah, up top, way up top on the first page. Yes. Simple lines, a plain white label. Yet it's been worn by women who embody elegance and glamour. Preparing for a road trip can be overwhelming. Getting the tires checked, the oil changed, it just all piles up. Each ridiculously, deliciously complex and perfect for giving, sharing or self-indulging. Did you find everything okay, ma'am? I did, thank you. It just took 50% off that yogurt. Did you see that? Yeah, sure did. Oh, wait. Scan the soy milk. Doctors told Matt's parents that due to his asthma, he'd never be much of an athlete. That he'd never hit a home run. Asthma can be defeated. For millennia, your world has been protected by champions of other realms. realms. I guess it's because whether it's our home oh, or our okay. finances, we, we both want to make sure that things are done right. We can't My hear PR that when it's playing. Right. We can, but we turn it off. Because we get too much latency as it goes back through Skype and everything. So we don't want to confuse ourselves as we've got two to five second delays sometimes. But so that was your commercial demo, a lot of uh, things like that. Now we have a narration demo, I think, too, right? We do. That is, it's, yeah, narration demo. Meet Joe and his wife Rita. Despite their busy schedules, they do everything possible to make their house a home. With one exception, the poor walls. Aww. It's not their fault. They could hang an original painting, but that would cost more than their furniture. Or a reproduction, but they're never quite the same. I got an idea! Looks like Joe has an idea. We've seen in this university example that even when your technical options are limited, you can pursue a phased process that replaces only one part of the system at a time. The advantages to a phased approach are many. The technical challenges can be solved and tested one by one in a limited time frame. For the electric power industry, being smart starts with data. Data that tells us where and how much energy is being used at any given moment. Knowing the needs of each customer is smart. It means that you can provide better customer service and new products and services customized to meet their needs. Multinational companies must evaluate the possible impact in light of their global footprints. That was good. And then you also mentioned once that you did audiobooks and you did one where you had to play, was it 46 different characters? Yeah, my first audiobook. I haven't done many audiobooks because I'm really slow. It just takes <laughs> me so much time. But I, it is a skill set of mine and I do love it. I do love, there again, it's it's a different art form mm -hmm. for, for audiobooks. You're not going to go full character and you also have guys to do. So yes. you just kind of, you give the essence of, of the character. And I just love that as an art form. And so I might be doing a little bit more audiobook recording in in the near future. I have one author, I do her books in German and in English. And I love that too, because it's just a very unique challenge because you work you work differently because um in in the the last book of hers that I did, I had I I studied as just a slight Scottish accent and just just really kind of the melody of it. Well, that didn't work in German because it puts you, that kind of trying to imitate that accent in German, puts you in a specific area mm. um, in Germany that was like, it, that the whole book would have fallen apart. It just didn't work. So I just had to do that in high German. Um, but it's it's a nice, it's a nice um, area of... of Voicing. I mean, there's so much that we as voice talent do, be it explainer videos for right. products or, you know, e-learning. That's how we met each other. Uh, the audiobook, of course, things and um, animation. Um, yeah. It's a lot of, a lot of different. And it's not easy work either when you're doing audiobooks, especially like you said, I think it was 46 voices you said. That's a lot of people. You actually have to change them just a little bit each just one. Just a little bit. And, and then, I change them by either posture 
or mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. how I <clears throat> how, how I farm them in my mouth, you know, wherever I put them in, in, you know, kind of wherever I put them in my mouth or in yep. or my throat or wherever they are. Um, of course, they can't sound cartoony because they're usually real life characters. Right. And I, I write down, I, when I prepare the book, I write down their characteristics. Sometimes it's it's a sentence that's very typical um, for that character or how I want to create that character. Or, like I said, it's their posture or it's um, nasal or whatever it is. And then, of course, I really have... And then usually what I do is when I first record that character, I save a little snippet of that character just in case it takes until the end of the book that that character reappears. Mm, right. So that's how I make sure um, that character is the same. And, and while you make that sound easy, that's a lot of work. It's not that easy. There's a lot of work to keep track of all those voices, not to mention make sure they're consistent. Yes. So, but that's yes. also a lot of fun. I, I've met and other people who've done audiobooks, and they, they only did audiobooks for a living. And... They could do all sorts of voices. And, you know, they just, yes. it's the right intonation at the right moment. And, and all you need is just a little differentiator when there's a dialogue to, to make it believable. Absolutely. And, and after a while, you suspend, oh, wait, she's a woman reading a guy's voice, or it's a guy reading a woman's voice. And after a while, it just sort of makes sense. Yes, it yeah. has to make sense. You can't pull the listener out of the story. I mean, it has to make sense. Right. And if you try to be a guy, like you go, and you go, Yes, and then I went to, and it just doesn't sound right. No, So no, it has to no. be slightly different. All, all you can do is just kind of drop your voice. <clears throat> right, just drop yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or if you're going to do a woman, you have to go a little bit louder, a little bit less. And But you're just playing with it a little bit, because if you go mm-hmm. all the way, it sounds kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> that's pretty good. Yeah. And there was one video I think we wanted to show on this, the too. One, go, the mm-hmm. one there, top row, the middle. Yeah. That's kind of what I consider for video games. I, I call it my money voice. Uh. I do that a lot for video games. Scout out your target, choose the weapon that will expose its weakness to the world, and fight with all its strength left at your core. Loot the beast's lair and craft. Sell and eat what you can to prepare for the dark night ahead. During the day, you may have some semblance of control, but the night will transform this place into a living, seething hell that swells and fights with a mouth of its own. Ration your health, supplies, and gold in the hopes of one day returning from this battle swathed in riches and glory. However should you die in this endeavor, your spirits shall remain trapped and tortured to haunt the doomed adventurers still struggling against their inevitable demise. Choose a side, or doom them all. No matter the adventurer, one constant remains. Everyone will die. I can see you having a lot of fun doing that. <laughs> I love those kind of reads. Um, for, for the simple reason that as an artist, as a voice artist, your voice develops. And so it, it does get deeper as, as, as you mature. And so you, you, you go into different genres mm-hmm. and they present themselves and you, you package all of your experience then into those kind of reads. And they, they, it's, I, I love that because it's just you're continuously reinventing yourself. Yep. And it's amazing because a lot of people don't realize that this is a tool. It's an instrument, mm-hmm. just like a musical instrument. And you've got to keep it oiled, if you will. You've got to keep it clean. And it's amazing what our voices can do when you work with them. Yes. <clears throat> it's a, and it's you, a, do, you do a lot with mic technique as well. Yes. Yeah. I remember when I first started here in the United States, I didn't know. Somebody sold me this whatever it was and it was supposed to be able to change this and make my voice sound different in mm. this and i i sold it really quickly <laughs> then because i'm used to working with the microphone and doing things with a microphone especially when i'm doing gamification or or video games or animation um that's how you make your voice sound different for the characters when they're full-blown characters 
when they're natural characters, like in audiobooks, you work a bit, you, you, you work differently, which is the fascination of things, right. because everybody you're speaking is a real person, so mm -hmm. you don't want to, you know, it's not come some little bunny hopping across the screen <laughs> that you're, you're <clears throat> portraying. You, you haven't been to California really soon. Those are real people in California. Little bunnies hopping across things. <laughs> Yeah. Let's move on from that. <laughs> we have them all here. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> um, <clears throat> it does get strange sometimes, but anyway. Um, and you're right. Mic technique is very important. When I when I've taught audio to people, um, you know, you tell them, okay, if you get about this far away, your voice isn't going to be as loud. But if you get really close, now you're going to have proximity effect, and your voice is going to sound a lot different. And now it's midnight and you're on FM radio. Yes. And, and so how and where you position yourself or how you talk one side versus this side, that causes a, a big difference. And like it you does. said, that can change your voice, your modulation, the way you breathe, all of that. And, and so, you know, the microphone is your tool and it works with this tool. And so you combine the two and you can get some really amazing effects sometimes. Um, <clears throat> the other thing people don't realize is that as as voiceover talent, you have to practice all the time. You do our our auditions really. I mm -hmm. mean, that's how it how it works very yeah. well here. Our auditions, we audition a lot. We basically mm -hmm. every job we get, um, we have to audition for. I yeah. mean, we have our clients that we that we work for. On, on a regular basis for those we don't have to audition but everything else really is audition based yeah. and i find you can learn a lot just through auditioning i actually sometimes even pay to be coached for an audition mm. just to brush it up and you know stretch and um improve my skill set now, that's a really good point you're making because a lot of times, no matter how good you are at VO, and, and Linda's very good. Now, for Linda to say that proves how important this is. No matter how good you are, your ears can deceive you. Yes. So you want to get another person to listen, somebody who knows what they're doing. Absolutely. And help with certain small things that you may hear but you don't pay attention to because you're used to yourself. Yes, yes. And you also need to be in tune with the times. I mean, there are there there are times where people like the more announcery. Mm -hmm. Right now people do not like the announcery read. I know, it's a shame. And it, so you have to transform. I find even so not only mic technique, but also headphone technique. Mm. Um and by that I mean you record differently if you're hearing yourself through your headphones right. as opposed to just reading without the headphones and hearing yourself how you're used to hearing yourself yep. in everyday life. I find that gives a more natural read. At one point, you have to listen back with the headphones because mm -hmm. you have to hear if there are mouth noises or room noises or maybe too loud. Uh, you breathe, you're just There was this one breath that was just way too loud, so you have to be able to hear that to then deliver a clear recording and a clean recording. But yes, even your, your headphones make a difference. They do. They really do. I've had some headphones... That when I was recording, they were so actually they were Bayer Bayer Dynamics, the mm -hmm. uh, or Bayer Dynamics. Those are the German headphones. They're very good. They block out all sound, including your own. So when you're talking, you feel like your ears are being squished because you yes. can't. You're you're talking through a bathysphere uh, underwater somewhere. I hated them. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. I like listening through them, but I don't like talking through them. I, yes. It was very distracting because it's I, and they're all different. Um, and they usually say the open back ones, they have a little bit that's open, are the best for voiceover because you still hear yourself naturally without total uh, isolation. Yes, yes. When I'm in a studio, in, in a studio where other people are recording me, I usually ha have to have a headset because they, they're communicating right. with me. I'll put one on one ear mm, and the other yep. basically yep. off. Yep. The and ear. that way you still have a natural sound. You do. You yeah, do. these are things people think, you know, you just get voiceover, you just sit in front of Mike and go, hey, everybody, I'm a voiceover talent. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I get a lot of emails, 
how do I get into the business? I go, you work hard. Oh, yes. But how do I get in? No, no, work hard means you work hard. You've got to practice. When you're first new at it, you got to practice. Read out loud, repeat, 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 improvise, play with your voice, play with your breathing, play with your microphones. Get more than one microphone, but I don't have the budget. Then do what you have with what you can, mm -hmm. but know that you're going to sound different on 10 different microphones. Absolutely. Every mic will be different. And you know this, when you go to a studio, you're not going to get the same mic every time. No. So you, you're, there's a little bit of fear for everybody who does VO when they first get into a new microphone to hope that they sound like what you expect to sound like. Yes. And they are different. Some mics are bassy. Uh, for example, um, this mic. This is um, uh, a Rode, Rode NTG3. Rode makes very good mics. But this mic makes my voice an octave or two lower. Wow. Just yes. by its very, it's a very bassy microphone. This one it pretty much makes your voice the way it is. Mm -hmm. So, and, and sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want a different sound. But this is, for reproduction, it's great. Um, yeah. But the mics, you just, they're all different. And when you first get into this, you start realizing, how do I, why do I sound different? It's the mic. Um, yeah. And when people first hear you or hear you outside of a, a recording, they may not recognize that you're a voiceover talent because we do sound different on microphones. We do. And it's funny. Now, Linda, if people want to get a hold of you, and I know you're fairly busy, but you, you know, you're know, you like all of us. You try to get new clients all the time. Absolutely. How, how can people get a hold of you? What's the best way? Love new clients. <laughs> so my email, be the best thing is email. So that's Linda at lindajoyvoiceover.com or linda at lindajoyvo, which is shorter. Linda at lindajoyvo.com. Let me see if we can, should be there on my, well, it's so small on my website. I don't know if you can right. see it. But anyway, you, um, so they can go right to your homepage and get your email right there. Yes, it's right there, right at the okay. bottom. And I have a couple of agents. I only have three listed there. I, I have quite a few agents, which is always wonderful. So people can contact me through my agent, through one of my agents as well. And you do English and you do German as your, both of them really as your specialty. There aren't that many German voiceover people around here. Uh, so no, that is, not in the United States. Not in the it's, US. It's, it, it's an unusual combination. Yeah, but it's a good one. And you, you speak beautifully in both. I've heard recordings you've done in both of them and very, very fluid in, in, in both of them. And you make German, which to me sometimes is sort of guttural or harsh, you make it very nice. So if you are looking for German voiceover, there she is. Like, Thank you. There. <laughs> Got to point the right way. There she is. <laughs> um, and uh, I know for a fact that Linda's done a lot of work with us in e-learning, and she does a great job on e-learning narrations and voiceovers. And again, she has a very distinct, unique voice, which is what we like. We like, and the clients have liked her voice. Yes. They, all, they all think you're an actress, and I go, well, she actually is. Um, <laughs> So, because again, that the, the training and the background, and when you say you go to a conservatory, here people don't, unless you're in the arts, people don't know what conservatories are, but they're really the highest level of, of learning art, media, sound, acting. It's, that's really where it's at. Yes, the, the, the Mozarteum is, is kind of like Juilliard's, so you audition to get into the school, not well, everybody is taken. That one's famous and in Salzburg. By, in Salzburg. Yeah, that's a very um, famous one. Pardon me? It's a very famous one. It is, yes. And so a conservatory, you don't do math and history. You just, in my case, study stage work, improv, right. a lot of voice work, uh, the different types of singing, just everything to do with the performing arts. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't sing. You don't like singing. I just don't have, I mean everybody else has a better voice than me i mean that would be silly i need to i i love to stick to what i do best okay <laughs> <clears throat> well linda as always and you know this is coming right off my mouth i go as it's a joy to have you on and i just realized there's no pun intended uh, but it is a joy to have you on and thank um, you rick and for all of you in the audience and a, a lot of you do e-learning work and e-learning projects uh Other way, this way. Linda. <laughs> it's not it's, nice to point yeah. at people, but I'm making a point. Linda. 
She's very good. She's very good. Thanks. Give her a call and um, she will do good work for you. I know she's done very good work for us and other people I know. So, so Linda, a pleasure having you on again and, and we'll see you next week. Well, actually, Thank next week I think we're starting me. up again. So we'll see you soon and, and good luck. And, and you can get a hold of Linda at Linda Joy at voiceover. LindaJoyVO.com. Yep. Sounds great. Well, Linda, have a great weekend and we will see you next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thanks. Thanks.